Welcome to another episode of Fabric Tech Talk Fridays. Today we have here Kelly, an MVP. Kelly, you want to introduce yourself? My name's Kelly Brookstra. I'm an MVP from Melbourne, Australia. I've only been an MVP for 14 months, so this is exciting for me. This is all me to, to share my knowledge, so thank you. Wonderful. So for, for folks who want to be an MVP, can you share us a little bit about the journey to get there? Yep. So I was nominated by a fellow MVP. I have been running a user group in Melbourne for a couple of years. So trying to build up the community in that space. And then a fellow MVP uh, noticed and came in and spoke to me about the process. Took me about six months to sort of go through it all and understand it. Mm -hmm. But he filled in the initial form. I then added the things that I've done. And yeah, that's was great. Happened. Great. Perfect. Happy to have you here. But today we are diving into one of my favorite topics. We'll sort of take a step back and get into the basics of getting your raw data using Medallion architecture into Microsoft Fabric. And for that, we also want to use and leverage task flows. So to unveil all of these things and demystify for us, Kelly, can you, can you start giving us a little bit more detail on about? About Medallion architecture? Yes. Okay. So Medallion architecture is a common methodology, not so much a technology that takes you through bringing your data in from source to a bronze layer, then doing your initial transformations and massaging that data into a silver layer, and then doing further transformations to bring that data, data warehouse or, or semantic model ready into a gold layer. Is that where the whole start schema? Uh, it's not quite related. Mm -hmm. So your raw data will be quite structured to perform well in your operational system. The star schema is the structure that we're looking for to ensure performance reports within Power BI reports. So it's actually quite different, a structure. Mm -hmm. So we use the medallion architecture to step through the processes to get to that structure. Wonderful. So we hear a lot, whenever we talk about data warehouses, predominantly we talk about star schema models. And can you can you let us know how, did, how does it fit into the modern data stack and what is the significance? So a star schema will uh, ensure the performance and the optimization of and the usability of your Power BI or of your semantic model. Uh, so you can bring a flat file into Power BI, but it's difficult to find things. It won't scale well, it won't perform well. You massage that data into a star schema with facts and dimensions, mm -hmm. then your Power BI report is going to perform, it's going to scale, and it's going to be a lot easier for those business users that are self-serving reports to actually build. That's great. Now, I also heard about task flows. So we're going to combine Mishmash, the medallion architecture using task flows. Yep. Before we get into it, what is a task flow? So task flows are, are available within the fabric workload. Uh, they're actually a really good way of brainstorming your process and of grouping the objects within your workspace together. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Now, do they help us automate or speed up the process during the development? Uh, they definitely help with the development side of things. So you can bring in the task flows and use them almost like a canvas for um, this is this is bronze. What do I need to put in bronze? So you then know what to build. This is silver. What do I need? So they do help in that respect. So it's almost a way of brainstorming your ETL development before you start building it. That is amazing because it's like whiteboarding, but within the product the itself. Product, yeah. Very, very smart. Perfect. Now, during this whole medallion architecture, massaging the data, what is the role of data pipelines, data flows, Gen 2? Can, can you demystify a little bit there? Um, Unfortunately, it's the consultant answer. It kind of depends. Uh -huh. So um, I will use um, pipelines or data flows to move the data from one layer to the next. Uh -huh. So depending on whether it's uh, in a mirrored or a shortcut database, whether I'm moving to a lake house or whether I'm moving over to a data warehouse, I'll pick my technology based on what I'm, I'm trying to achieve, as well as the skill set of my developers. Perfect. Now, at Fabric Tech Talk Fridays, we always want to do a demo. Of and course. Enough of all this talking, Kelly. Let's get to the laptop and see all of these things in action. Sounds good. We'll start off by drawing my star schema. I like to do this on a whiteboard or even just in a notepad app so that I can get all of my thoughts onto paper or onto the screen without wasting time configuring an app. I start in the middle with a sales fact table and then I draw off the dimensions. I'll include a date dimension, a customer dimension, and a product dimension. From here, I move over to Fabric. Now, I'm using the task flow feature here. I've brought through the Medallion Architecture task flow template, 
which gives me a way of knowing the steps in the process. I can now build the fabric workloads within each of these steps rather than building everything from scratch. Over on the left-hand side, I have where my data is coming from into a bronze layer, and then I do an initial process into a silver layer, a further transformation into a golden layer, and then my final visualizations over to the right. So now I'm going to start filling in each of those task rows with the workloads that are required. In my load from archive, I'm going to bring in some CSV files, and I'm going to do this via a notebook that is going to read all the data in from those fields and combine it all into a single table. I've also got some data here in a fabric database, and I'll show you that shortly. In my bronze lake house, you'll see that I have brought through my sales bronze, which is the data from those CSV files, all in one big table, as if I'd run a union command in SQL. And I've also got reference here to the fabric database, which I loaded using a basic copy job, but I could have used shortcuts. In the silver layer, I need to split the data from the archive into an individual table for each of the dimensions and sales facts. To do that, I'm going to use a notebook in my initial process stage. So in here, I am bringing through all the data and I'm breaking out the dates and adding some extra information to each of those date rows to build out a complex date table. I'm also splitting out the information that relates to my customers, products, and the sales fact. That means that I can get everything into a separate table in my Silver Layer Lake House. Now you'll see in the Silver Lake House, I have a DIN customer archive table with and only the columns that relate to customers coming from those archived CSV files. And then the customer fields from the fabric database in the DIM customer LT table. These are different sets of data with different customer IDs, but they've been brought together here in a single lake house. I've done the same for date, product, and sales. The next step is to further transform that data and bring those two customer data sets together into a single table. I decided to use a Dataflow Gen 2. As you can see, I've got one query for my archive sales data, which isn't going into a destination. Then I've got a second query, getting data from my customer sales table, customer table in this fabric database. What I have then done is append the data from the customer archive table into the fabric database customer table and set the destination to a data warehouse. I've repeated the same process for product and sales. The data warehouse is in my golden layer. And as you can see, I have a single table for each dimension and fact with no more references to archive or database names. Everything's brought into a single customer table. Now, I could, have, could also do some deduplication and make sure that I don't have the same customer showing twice, especially considering some customers will be in both the archive system and the main system. I haven't done that here, but this is definitely somewhere where you would add those steps to further prepare your data for your golden layer. From here, we're going to have a look at the semantic model. It's a pretty simple data model, but you'll see that it looks identical to the drawing I drew at the start on the whiteboard with sales in the middle and product, customer, and date as the points of the start. Now that I have a semantic model based on my original design, my users can self-serve and build their own reports or continue their analysis as they require. That's a great demo, Kelly. So what are some of the most common challenges when you're transforming data using Medallion architecture in Star Schema? Um, the biggest challenge with Medallion architecture uh, whilst using task flows is that task flows can't cross over workspaces. And a lot of people will build the bronze layer in one workspace, the silver layer in a second workspace, the bronze layer in, uh, so gold layer in a third workspace. Mm -hmm. uh, in that situation, you can't use the task flows because the task flows don't cross over workspaces. To counter that, I do my initial development in a single workspace. And then as my data architecture, my data landscape grows and grows and grows, as it always will, I can then split it out. But I still use task flows for that whiteboarding, brainstorming start of the process. And then I can just repeat it as I go through after I've split everything. No, that's, that's a great tip. Now, how do we ensure data quality, governance, and lineage when you are orchestrating all these data transformations? So I speak in the demo a little bit about data quality um, and ensuring that we can remove duplicates from multiple data sources. 
Um, but in saying that as well, we can also use the lineage views within the tar within the fabric workspace, mm -hmm. which complement the task clothes really, really nicely. Perfect. So for, for people who are trying to get started with fabric, what is that one key takeaway that you think is super important, especially when you're, when you're working with structured data or unstructured data um, using medallion architecture? So yeah, any key takeaways? Give it a try. <laughs> Set up a workspace, Import, uh, bring up the the, medall the medallion architecture task flows, mm. and then use it as a way of thinking through this. This is where I what I want my data to do. This is the destination that I'm aiming for with my star schema. Um, just give it a try. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kelly. You're welcome. Thank you everyone for watching. If you found this video valuable, don't forget hit that like button. If this is your first time visiting the Microsoft Fabric YouTube channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Drop a comment below on what you'd like to see on future episodes of Fabric Tech Talk Fridays. That's it for today. See you all next Friday for another deep dive into Microsoft Fabric.